Hey folks, welcome back. This should be the third and final uh, abomination video on this KZ one, KZ nine hundred rather. I can't even keep the bike straight. Uh, and I tell you what, uh, it's these things just fight you constantly. Now, as you can see right now, I have uh, the carb tune hanging here, and the tops off the carbs. And I had a run in yesterday, and it runs pretty good. And I'm going to show you that later. I can't show you right now. I'll explain it why, because I got to do some work basically. But what that work is, I'll explain. So um, I I had the same situation with this setup as I've had for the last two or three bikes. Hell, maybe it's this, but I don't think it is. That I I wasn't getting any readable intake pulse, and I'm like, what the hell? Now these carbs were jetted, in my opinion, pretty lean. I'm pretty sure that the um, slows were either 15s or 7, I think they were 15s, and the mains were 115s or something like that. I have these all the way up to 25s on the slows and 122.5s in the mains. And it still seems a little on the lean side, and it's giving me a little pop through the carbs every now and then, even though I've triple checked the timing, and I did this with the timing light two more times. And I don't want, I can't really, I don't want to pull the spark plugs out because the status of these um, spark plug holes, status. So, I mean, I may have to change them out, but I think, I, I know all four cylinders are firing. I had the thermometer on each one, they're roughly the same, pretty close. And so there's no way that it is a lean issue at um, idle uh, based upon the jetting because typically as we found in a couple last jobs in particular the uh, police bike which i totally botched when you have the slow jet on these inline 40s older ones set uh, if it's too small for some reason and i've explained that in other videos my hypothesis on that you don't get a good intake pulse and so um, that has solved it on the z1r and it solved it on the police bike z1r is over there which is why i'm pointing that way but not on this one so i'm figuring with a popping through the carbs and the condition it's running in right now, which again isn't terrible, but it's not good enough. Um, I, I think that the valves are tight. There's a couple of tight valves. And being this thing has 5,900 miles, I assume it's original miles. I imagine that the previous owner has been in here, but with that low mileage, I seriously doubt a valve clearance was done. So. What I'm gonna do is, um, I think I can do this without taking the carbs back out. Some bikes you gotta pull the covers back and up, but I, with, with these coils that are kinda sucked up into the frame instead of hanging down, which is nice, I think we can get the head cover off. Now, I'm not gonna film that. I'm just gonna come back and report my findings because I really gotta get moving on this. I will tell you where we're at, though, on other things. This is a replacement air box. I talked about that in the last video. This is the correct air box. Uh, it was full of junk on the inside. I thoroughly scrubbed it and prepped it and painted it with the VT, VT, v, VHT, very high temp, yeah, plastic matte black paint. It came out real good. And you can see that this lid is much higher, which allows the installation of the uh, silencer. So that all went in flawlessly. It's a lot easier to get the carbs out and back in now because apparently this sits a little bit further back. Then you bring it up a little bit once you get all four of the intake uh, boots on and Bob's your uncle. So this is solved, this issue is done. I do have a question about the air filter and maybe some of you guys out there can help because this one is really perplexing. We'll take the cover off here. This is the air filter that was in the other box. And it's in nice shape, it's okay. But this, this is the only one that fits. Now I bought another air filter for it, which is here. From Z1 Enterprises. It's an MGO brand. And, a, and I've checked twice to make sure I got the right one when I initially ordered it and afterwards. This is supposedly a KZ 900 7677 air filter element and it will not fit whoops i got it in backwards it will not fit the gasket's too thick and it's too tall and if you look you can see that tallness and also it's thicker there's no number on this one 
Otherwise, I'd look it up by number. But this one is the one that fits. Does anybody have any idea what this is as far, as far as application goes? Because like I said, I can't find the right filter for this besides the one that was in here, which I, like I said, is okay, luckily. I don't think it's a K&N. It would say K&N all over it, but this one will go in pretty well and sits down far enough. That seals up pretty good. Good as it's gonna, because it looks like it was made in the last century, which it probably was. And then the cover goes on. This one does none of those. So, yeah, I'm gonna toss this one right over there. Oops. So, yeah, I'm not sure about that. Maybe you guys can help. So, again, air, air cleaner or air intake is done. I believe the carbs are jetted decently right now. I was able to, uh, a viewer suggested this, to turn the carb tune over upside down. And it, I, I didn't believe that was gonna work. And it actually worked pretty well. And so I was able to sync them, carbs that is, based on doing that. But I prefer to do it up right side up like it's supposed to be done. But then again, there's a tang on the bottom of this for a zip tie. So you can hang it upside down. So maybe it's okay to do that. So I have it synced up best I can in the current configuration. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to shut you off, but not shut you out. And I'm going to try to get this head cover off without uh, decimating the gasket. If I can do that, because usually the gasket's stuck down to the head um, side of it because of the goo here. But even if I do have to replace it, I will. And we'll get in here and take a look at the valve clearances. I'll let you know what I find. I bet you there's some tight ones, either intake or exhaust or both. Well, hell, that was relatively painless. Gasket is intact, came right off. So I'm gonna start number four here since I'm on this side. And uh, we'll see what the hell we got. But I will get a flashlight and look at the T-mark come up. At least I could do that much. There we are. And that's right, because the lobes are pointing away from each other. The standard is, um, according to the service manual I have, Z900 service manual. It's um, two to four thou, or 0.5 to 0.1 millimeters. Three will not fit. Three fits on the exhaust. Here's a two and a half. Two and a half sort of fits. So technically, the, technically this one's within standard on the intake at least, two and a half. Let's see what the exhaust is, because being too big is not good either. Well, it's good in some areas. Here's a four. Can't get a four in there. Let's see if we can get a three in. If, it's two, if three goes in, then that one's good. Three thou. Yeah, this one's okay, because four won't go in, but three will. So, but this guy is at two and a half, and it's tight. Let me um, get something to write this down on. Let's go ahead and do number three. Here's a three thou. That goes in very easy on the intake. Very easy on the exhaust. Here's a four. It's a loose four. And also a loose four. Let's try a five. Five won't go in. Five will go in if you push it. This is probably four and a half thou. This is probably closer to maybe four and a few tenths. But technically, it's probably okay. There's four again. Yeah, I'd say it's four and a few tenths. If I was gonna guess, it'd be like four and three tenths. And the exhaust on number three is just a, maybe four and a half. So yeah, technically that might be out a little bit, but the intake is not bad. It's right, I think it's on the big side, which is what I would leave these at anyway because they tend to want to tighten up over time. But uh, so right now we're just borderline tight on um, number four intake, four exhaust, and I think three would basically pass muster. Let's move over to the other side. Set up for number two right now. All right, here's a three thou. It goes in real easy on the intake and just barely rubs on the exhaust. Let's go to a five, because that was pretty big. Five won't fit, on the intake at least. 
So here's a four sticking with this intake. It's a loose four on four intake. Let's try four exhaust. Won't take a four at all, but takes a three just fine. So this is good, and this is borderline on the loose side, but not terrible. So really no smoking gun yet. This is number one, set up on uh, the T-Mark. Three thousandths on the intake, loose, a little drag. So that's probably a little over three, three and a half thou. Let's try the intake side, so that's pretty good actually. Try four on the intake over here, and it'll take four and it's pretty good drag. So. Yeah, unfortunately, no smoking guns on this. So I honestly don't know why she's not running all that well uh, with um, the jetting I got in it right now. Um, I guess we're just going to end up having to leave it, for now at least, and uh, figure it out later. Now, again, number uh, four intake over there is a little on the tight side. Technically, it's within spec, but it's barely within spec. So if I was going to change any one out, it would be number four intake, make it a little bit bigger. But um, I'm gonna go back to that side and I'm gonna check, I'm not gonna film this, I'm gonna recheck four and I forgot to write down three, so I'll do that one too. I changed out number four intake. Luckily I had one, a shim that is. I believe there was a 2.35 in here and now I got a 2.30, so I got .10, which is right at the top of the limit, which kind of matches up with a lot, whoops, can't do that one, a lot of the other ones anyway. And um, so I'm pretty happy about that. Like I, this is somewhat of a snug drag on no, the in, exhaust rather, number four, and this is a moderate, this is about a perfect drag here. So we're right, I think we're right on spec for all of them now. I'll just make a note of this change, but um, you know, there's no smoking gun here. Uh, there's no valves that are certainly staying closed during various cycles. So I, I honestly don't know what is going on with why I can't get it to run right. It's, it's hanging like, other ones have hung um, when it's up on RPM and comes back down. I seriously doubt um, it's the um, ex uh, advance, but it could be. It could be weak springs in the um, mechanical advance holding it up. But I've gone really rich with these things. But there's also a reason why I went that way, and we're going to get into that here in a little bit. There's going to be a significant change made, which is going to be immediately noticeable. So we'll get to that here in a little bit. All right, folks, I believe I have found the problem. I was just about to put the head cover back on. And I said, you know, I was reaching for it and I said, wait a minute, you know, just for shits and giggles, I'm gonna make sure that this cam timing is correct. Cause I didn't do it, so I don't know. So I had to review the procedure, the procedure similar to other ones like the 1000 and so forth. And even that old J motor uh, police bike where you set the exhaust cam up first with the timing mark aligned with the surface of the head. And then you count over a certain number of pins. And then you pick up a mark, which on this one is the 28 mark for the 28th pin right there. I know you can't see that, but trust me. And that sets your timing for, for the intake side. But of course, it's all dependent on where the exhaust cam is set up. So I'm looking at this exhaust can, cam, rather, and I, I have it absolutely positively set up on number one T-mark, one in four T-mark. Now if you look carefully, let me turn the light down a little bit. Right about there is where I see the timing mark. On that one right there. Like I said, it's, it's really hard to see. It kind of is right behind that, uh, that nut, or that bolt, rather. Let's see if I can get back here. Yeah, there you go. You can see it now had to get further back with the light. Now again, I'm on the T-mark. That is uh, at least one full tooth off from being lined up with the block. I'm looking at it from the levelness or along the plane of the head, and that is way up there. So that's it. That is exactly, actually, one tooth off. I guess, um, you know, lead to our hanging and stuff, but uh, I'm going to double, triple check, check this, but I'm pretty sure, and I just looked at the I have a Z900 service manual printed out. I'm sorry about the dog today, folks. He's just being a total pain in the arse. I, I don't know what's up with him today. But uh, anyway, yeah, if you if you come back with the light, so it hopefully doesn't, geez, I hate this flicker and this LED crap, but I don't have another light that isn't LED. Again, you can see it pretty much lined up right with that uh, 
with that bolt. And I'll try to zoom up in editing so you can see it even better. But that would be that pin right here. So it's pointed right at this pin that the magnet is on. It should be at that pin. So this pin needs to be down there. So I bet you, I'm pretty sure that's the problem because like I said, I don't see any other marks on it. They're very hard to see. Hey folks, future me with a quick sidebar. In this still shot that I've zoomed up on, take a look at the cam itself where the cam gear bolts on. From This is from the left side of the bike looking toward the right. And look at the intake cam on the right. And you can see that that casting is angled down pointing toward the carburetors. Now look at the exhaust cam on the left. That is flat across. That should be a direct opposite of what the intake cam is sitting at. This was something I did see, but I failed to mention it in the video. So I just wanted to do a quick sidebar and break this out with a zoomed up still shot to show you that. Flipped around as far as orientation goes. But yeah, that, that really looks like the problem. I'm pretty sure here, like I'm not familiar with these 900, but they're pretty much the same as the old 1000s. And that timing mark, if that is indeed it, and I'll know for sure when I can move that cam chain away, but there's a little triangle there, is definitely, 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 one tooth off. At least if that's the mark. So I'm gonna, uh, I gotta go do some stuff and pick up some crap for the dog and go to the pharmacy and go do some grocery shit and then We'll come back and like I said, we got some big plans for different parts of the bike here, which you're going to notice right off the bat. Okay, I have the idler out and of course the tensioner out. I have not turned the cams, have not done anything with the cam chain, except move it away here and you can see that definitely is the mark right there, right next to that bolt. And you can definitely, definitely see that it is uh, one tooth off. So two things come to mind here. Number one, somebody made a mark with a white paint stick on this cam chain at one time, which obviously was in the disassembly slash reassembly uh, operations. And you'd have to ask yourself why. So has this head been off? Probably yes then. I don't know why it would have been off with such low mileage, but we have to assume that somebody's taking the cams out and the head off. So. Last thing I'll do is I'll reach, I'll check the torques on all the cam caps to make sure. But um, what we're going to do right now, I'm going to do it off camera, is just essentially just kind of lever it from this side, turn the cam, so that mark lines up, the chain goes in and it's taut on the exhaust side, and then we'll count the teeth over. Now speaking counting, not teeth, but counting links. Now speaking of counting links, I counted the links from the mark. So if somebody was going to do this, they would have been looking at the mark and you start the first link above the mark. So here is the link with the mark. And then see this would be one, two, three, and so on. So I went over here and took a look and where 28 is supposed to be, it's 27 links to the 28 mark right there. So you can see that 28 mark, but that's 27 links. So what happened was, when they counted these links, you know, normally you, you know, are supposed to at least, you're supposed to recognize the mark and then go one, two, three, like I showed you just now. So they went off of where the link meets the surface of the head. Of course, you have to subtract this gasket thickness here and then counted, and that would be 28 marks over to here. But it's only 27 because this is off. Step one off camera is gonna Again, probably just pry up on here, turn this cam a little bit with the uh, chain pushed away from the sprocket, realign it so that mark lines up with the top of the surface, less the uh, thickness of the gasket, of course. Uh, and then uh, we'll realign the chain, pull it across, uh, just like it is right now, it just kind of hangs there. Count the 28 links, make sure it, ma uh, ma it matches up 28. It's not going to, so we're gonna have to move this one a little bit. So once it's all that done, we'll put it back together and then we'll come back. Okay, actually that last statement was incorrect. The number of, uh, of links from the mark now to the 28 is 28 links. And the reason why is 28 pins is because I kind of gave it the answer before. They counted from the surface or the pin in that case that lined up with the surface of the top of the cylinder head and then did 28 links out to here, which is correct. 
and only the exhaust cam was off by one link. So by bringing the exhaust cam back, since the chain is not moving, only this uh, cam sprocket in relationship to the chain is now down one more. It's gotta be 28 if they counted 28 originally, which it is. I checked it three times with the, uh, uh, with the idler off out of the way, and it is most definitely, definitely 28 links to the mark, appropriate mark. Uh, the uh, tensioner's back in, everything's set up the way the service manual says. I've rechecked these, so let me go ahead and put the cover on now, and then we'll get, get back to business. All right, guys, I've been tinkering with it here a little bit, and I want to show you the end result. All Hulk hooked up to fuel, everything put back together. So here we go. So now we got a reading on the... Um, on the carb tune at least. I gotta do some tweaking on this. They're not quite exactly right, but now that I've got a reading, we can do that. Can you see that? There you go. Yeah, so there you go. Sounds pretty good. Like I said, we need a little tweaking done, but it's very close. Uh, that noise you hear is my lift vibrating. I wish I could figure out a way to stop it, but I need to put a weight on it or something, then it'll then it'll stop doing it, because it, it'll dampen it. That's better. Put that vice there. And I'm really pleased, see this is working now. Sounds good, runs good. So I want you to soak in that sound here for a moment, because it's gonna be important. Like I said, I want to tweak the uh, the synchronization a little bit. It's a little bit off. I mean, it's really close though, so that's why I think it runs pretty good. But even a small adjustment on these round slides in particular makes a big difference when uh, when you uh, go to you know finally set it up. You know, for the final you know the final setup settings, I guess you want to call it. Let's uh, recap then. Then we'll move on to the last part that I'm going to do today because generally I only work half day on Friday anyway and it's like 1 o'clock in the afternoon. So today's the Friday the 11th, by the way, so this will be out next week, this video. So anyway, recap. Um, no smoking gun on the valve clearance. Number four intake was just a little on the tight side. I think it had a 2.35 millimeter shim. I put a 2.30, so it's a 0.10 millimeter clearance, which is at the top of the maximum which is okay by me. I'd rather have it slightly loose uh, right at that top of the uh, maximum It'd be about four thou because um, these tend to tighten up anyway. The valve seats, you know, wear. You know, the thing is, I or even the shims, you know, the shims themselves can wear where the cam goes across them. But again, I believe that the valve seats do uh, more wear and therefore it closes up faster than they might open up from that. That's my experience with these um, flat tappet cam old bikes anyway. So that's why we, I did it that way. So again, no smoking gun on there. Um, I, there's another problem we have to address here shortly. While I'm on this side of the bike, I figured I'd tell you, is it's not charging well at all. The stator, I believe, is on the way out. And so that's probably why our charging system's low, as opposed to the Z1R over there. Uh, that stator tested well, because it was a new stator from the engine builder, but um, the voltage regulator took a shit. So, I don't think it's the voltage regular in this. I just got a fig, uh, regulator rather. I just got a, I just got a feeling that it is the um, stator based on those, those uh, meter readings. Yeah, so like I said, I'm gonna shut down for the day and pick up some tools and put some stuff away and then get in the AC with the dog who's bugging me again. This, the, he's been naughty today. I don't know, he just keeps getting naughtier today. And today he's just, I don't know, maybe he feels bad. He just feels naughty. I was alluding to something earlier in the video, and I want to show you what that is, because the big brown truck just came and left. So let's go over and take a look. Not him. <coughs> hey folks, sorry for the brief intermission. I just needed to explain a couple quick things. The previous clips up to right now were shot about two weeks ago, up to the point where I said that big brown was here, the big brown truck. And big brown, brown, that's a little hard to say, yeah. Anyway, um, they brought a uh, four into four reproduction exhaust system for this KZ900A4. 
Uh, 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 that's all you get right now. You got to watch the rest of the video to see it in action. There was significant problems in regards to the product, but it had nothing to do with where we bought it from. I just want to say that right up front. It had to do with UPS and the shipping. Now, I thought it was important to share it with y'all, but unfortunately, it's just way too long for this video. So it'll be a separate video that is coming out at the exact same time this one does. And if you care to, you can take a look at that. Anyway, taking it from that point, we're going to go ahead and get to the clips where I was unboxing, and we're going to go ahead and install a usable set of 4 into 4s for the KZ900. And then uh, you'll see and hear how it looks and runs. Hear how it looks? Yeah. Anyway, you get my point. So that's all I wanted to tell you in this quick intermission. And again, look for that other video and it explains the whole thing. Jeez, this is a dumb video. I gotta be real careful opening this thing because I gotta reuse the box. Okay, just kidding. Even the dog's not amused. He looks pretty bored right now. He's like, your comedy's getting old. Just like me. I think I need to buy new, a more, uh, I can't talk. I'm calling EMS. Let's see, uh, all right, dog lays in the worst places, then he's like, what the hell am I moving for? All right, so this is what I'm talking about with the styro, foam. Everything's individually packaged as far as separated goes. So you got two pipes apparently on the top here and two on the bottom. Here's a bag with t-shirts because they sent me a couple of, they sent me a t-shirt. Um, extra fat, of course, extra fat. So that's nice. Carefully, I don't want to rip it. Uh, come on, baby. And that one goes there. And they are labeled, I guess. Yeah, four. Here's four. Oh, God, I'm old. Let me guess, three? Oh, I cheated. I saw it on the way down. Three? My back is, like, absolutely pooched. Good. Oh, got a hat. America. Oh, wait a minute. Two hats. Oh, that's right. I get to give one to the customer, maybe. Number one, numero uno. And last but not least, numero dos. Now what I'm gonna do off camera, I am out of shape, I tell you what. It's just so damn hot, I can't work out, as far as you know. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and get this done. And when we come back, we're gonna inspect them, and then we're gonna start working to get them on the 900. Okay, they're all unwrapped, inspected, and I renumbered them because, of course, you know, I'm stupid, so I need to know where they go. I do have a uh, package of hardware that goes with this stuff, you know, the brand new bolt and the rubber grommets and all that crap over there. I don't need to show you that. So this is what we're going to do. I'm not going to be filming any of this install. This video is getting long enough as it is. Um, I will come back basically when um, the old is off and the new is on. Let's go ahead and get these on. Okay, so you can see it's all installed, looks great. That's a real slick looking exhaust system. Um, it was a little tricky, but um, now that I've done it once, because I've never installed a four and a four, I could probably do it about a third of the time. You know, it's just a learning curve. The only issue we have with this is the damper for the side stand. The center stand is fine, but this side stand has got a lot of slop in it, and I believe that that bolt is probably wrong. That shouldn't be like that. So it comes way outside here and misses it completely. Um, we're gonna have to investigate that. So for now, I'm just gonna leave it down. And um, yeah, so uh, I guess um, we're about out of time now. So, um, you know, I guess we'll pick it up. Now, you know I wouldn't do that to you. Let's see how this thing sounds.
we're going to try it now. And uh, I'll tell you what happened here in a minute. It runs pretty good. You're going to love this. Listen to this sucker now. All right, so that runs a hell of a lot better. So let me tell you what I did. Um, off camera, first thing I did was I pulled the spark plug wire off of four, just at random, started it up, and it ran the same, real crappy, like it's got a dead hole. And so then I took um, a spark plug from my stash, a used one, and put it on the wire, and it sparked fine. Then I took number four plug out and put it on the wire, and it didn't spark at all, so we had a bad plug. And I go, well, it happens. Then I started it up with a, with a replacement plug, and it ran a little bit better, but it still had a dead hole. So I said, no way. So, come over here to number one. Did the same test. Sure as hell, I unplug it, no change. Take that spark plug out, hook it in, the one that was in there, no spark. Two bad plugs. These are B8 ESs, which is what it calls for. Now I put a B8 E R B eight R E S, so it's a resistor plug. It's all I had on hand because you can't get these B eight E S S anymore. I, they're, they're, they've been long gone. And I, and I have one in number one and number four, and you heard how it ran. So it happens, but you know what? This is a lesson because I've been fighting this thing running poorly since I started working on it, and I did think about changing all the spark plugs, but they look so new that I figured that the previous owner had changed them. Now he may have, but these are no good. Now they're a little bit fouled, yes, and that could have been from the way it was running before, but I cleaned them and gapped them. They should be firing in this condition. So they are just bad plugs. And I've been running into a lot of bad NGK plugs lately. So these could have been replacements, but knockoffs, is there some of those out there as well? But now, yeah, oh, she runs yeah, that is really good. So it sounds real nice with that four into four. I just wanted to run it a little bit. Stinks though, you know, while it burns off the inside of the exhaust. I did wipe off the outside with alcohol. No, not that kind of alcohol. Rubbing alcohol. Rub one out. Yeah, so I'm real happy with it. This, um, this solved a number of problems. Uh, this was dumb. This was another dumb move. I should have just shotgunned all the plugs. And you know, I knew better. That's a rookie mistake, but you know, you know, if you don't need to replace them, you don't replace them. You know, it's an expense. So I'm gonna order four brand new plugs and replace them anyway. But speaking of day, I gotta get going here because I promised mama I'd make her spaghetti tonight, but we gotta hear it run one more time. Cha-cha-cha. All right, folks, that's it on video number three and the final video on this KZ900. There shall be no more. All the rest of the stuff I got to do, I'm going to do off camera because I got to get this done and get it out of here. Yeah, so that's it. I hope you enjoyed these three videos on this KZ900. Uh, this video is getting pretty long, so I'm going to not be long-winded at this point. But I will say this. If you want to see more stuff like this and some other projects, you need to stick around. You subscribe, you like, you share, you do all those things to help me out because it doesn't cost you a cent, but again, it helps me out immensely. And then you get notified when I put more crap like this up. So as always, folks, thanks for watching. Don't just repair, restore. And we'll catch you on that next video.